Hey, it's great to have you here today, hanging out with Top Speed Golf Certified Instructor Michael Durr. We're talking over the last couple days about shaft lane, and we get tons of questions about this. What's too much shaft lane? Why wouldn't I just use a lower lofted club instead of getting more shaft lane? You know, there's just a lot of misconceptions out there. We wanted to make a video going over all those so that you don't have to worry about it anymore. So one of the first things, we were just talking about a student of yours, and you said that he had the same launch angle, whether it was all the way in the front of the stance, so pretty rare here, mm -hmm. had, the, had the ball way up in the front of the stance or way back in the back of the stance and getting the same height shots. So what was he doing with his shaft lean and his overall body position that you think, you know, less than optimal or good to clear it up? Yeah, so this is, this is one of my online students. The, the deal that was happening was he was really, really obsessed with getting forward shaft lean. So he pretty much just cared if the shaft was leaned forward at impact. So his problem he was having was he said, essentially, no matter where I put the ball in my stance, I'm hitting the ball at the same height. So what was happening was he was coming into the ball with forward shaft lean, but he was doing it incorrectly. So he just didn't have the basic fundamentals They're down. all going too low, right? Like they, yeah, everything was higher. coming out super low. And that's a common question too. Like, well, if I get shaft lean, why won't I just hit it low? Um, and that doesn't necessarily always have to be the case. We can get into that here in a minute, but uh, right. yeah, show us what he was doing. So yeah, so that's kind of one of the other problems is he was getting so far. So essentially what he was doing is no matter where the ball was in his stance, he would get ahead of it. He would come down and with four, he would actually, if you just looked at just the shaft, there would be forward shaft lane. But if you put the ball in front of his stance, he would come in with the same amount of forward shaft lane. He would just move forward more. So that was the big issue and everything was coming off pretty much too low and the same no matter what he did. So he had a good amount of shaft lean, but it was coming off too low because mm -hmm. he was also where he was shifting in front of the ball or getting too far to the left on all these shots. He's also kind of chopping down into it a little too much. Mm -hmm. And then now the ball gets overly low and, and right. not really what the pros are doing. Well, it's because he's accomplishing getting the shaft to lean forward, but he's not, he's not gonna, his attack angle is gonna be off or so many things off because it's just not fundamentally the same as how you, how you should be doing it with your body. Yeah, that's, that's a misconception I see is a lot of times players will think, well, if I get the right amount of shaft lean, what the pros are doing, and the pros are de-lofting the club about 30% of the natural loft. So if the six iron has 30 degrees of loft, they're taking it down to 20 degrees, and all that means is the 30 degrees measured on your six iron is when the club is straight up and down. This club face angle has 30 degrees there. Um, thought I had a little, here, I'll grab one of these real quick. So I got a little magnet here that'll show you what that angle is. Oh, that's perfect. That'll be... So shaft straight up and down. Imagine this is a six iron. This is a 30 degree angle from the ground. If I do what the pros are doing, I take about 30% of that loft off, which means I lean the shaft forward about 10 degrees and that loft on the club face goes from 30 to 20. If I'm using a lob wedge, so a 60 degree club, shaft straight up and down, 60 degrees aloft compared to the ground. They're gonna lean that forward 15 to 20 degrees, taking about 30% of the natural loft off of it. So the loft is when the shaft is straight up and down. It's called dynamic loft or whatever loft when you hit the ball at impact, that's gonna be 15 to 20 degrees lean forward or about 30% of the natural loft. And you can see that's a much lower angle. Now, when people think of that, they think, well, if I'm gonna lean this club 15 or 20 degrees forward, that must mean that I'm chopping down and hitting into the ground. Well, in reality, you're not exactly doing that. When I'm getting in the downswing, my hands are low at the lowest point, kind of back here when the club is still well before impact. And that's gonna be about when your hands are in front of your back leg. Yeah, so my hands, left hand in front of my right thigh, club shaft parallel with the ground still, you're gonna see this universal with all pros. I call that the power position. But then as I go down further, my body rotates open, my hands almost start to work back up and that levels it out. A great way to demonstrate that would be, let's get a ton of shaft lean all the way on my back foot here. I can still rotate through there with the club level with the ground. But the key difference there is that go, go ahead and go back into your shaft lean. Mm -hmm. So you see here how his hands are gonna be moving upwards. The problem with my student is he was still kind of coming down into yeah. the ball. So, so when he got so yeah. far left, now yeah. all of a sudden it's like my body's blocking me. I right. can't really move. I'm not going to do this to move it up, right? Yeah, some, some players do. They'll, yeah. they'll get out ahead of it like that and then try to save it. Like a Brooks Kepka yeah. or um, a Hovlin. Victor Hovland. Hovland yeah. kind of does that. Um, show me what, he, what is, we're talking about his head position. Right. 
and what you did with that. Yeah, so, well, I think one of the things that I think why players get into this is because they can get a pretty solid feeling hit on the ball, and then they're just like, oh, if I just keep doing that, I'll figure out how to hit it straight. But it's, it's actually real volatile because we're not coming into the ball correctly. It's going to just... I mean, there's a lot of different things that can go off because you're still flipping the club. You're just getting, you're flipping it with, or I call it artificial shaft lean. So the, the fix there for just simple terms is you have to have correct body movement. So when I explain to my players, uh, correct body movement, as we talk about in the stable fluid spine course mm -hmm. on the website, is when we get set up at address, we want our belt buckle slightly in front of the midline. We want our nose just behind the midline. And then on the downswing, we actually want to increase that angle. Yeah. Now, if we have forward shaft lean with that body angle, then we'll get the hands moving up through impact after forward shaft lean versus just plowing down into it. It's almost like to think about it if we're talking about the straight line release. You know, imagine having that ball about five feet in front mm -hmm. down the target line. Right. If I was going to throw this club toward that ball, right. I would naturally set my, my body. So go ahead and get in a good, good um, uh, spine angle again in your downswing, let's say. This is the angle I would put my body in to be able to release this club out toward the golf ball and my hands would naturally work back up. You're not even gonna have to try to think about doing this when you get in the correct tilt. If I get too far forward, like he was saying, it's lean in front of it. Yes, I may have shaft lean. Yes, I may hit it solid, but now I'm getting this chopping down real inconsistent. And that release motion. point will be at the ball. Yeah. So in the straight line release, we want the club splitting the forearms at about that 40, 45 degree angle out in front. The, the players that get out in front of it, that is splitting their forearms pretty much right after impact. Yeah. So that's a huge, huge difference between yeah. the two. And on a little side note here, a little side benefit of it, you know, when the hands are in front like that, that much, and, and my body's behind, you know, that really kind of shallows out that angle of attack. And what really happens is there's kind of a virtual flat spot, if you want to call it that. So you have shaft lean, but as the, the butt end of the club rotates up with the body, the, the bottom of the club kind of levels out. And now I can hit anywhere, say from my glove, like the logo on my glove, I could hit there, or I could hit a few inches in front of that. The club's coming in nice and level, flattens out. And that's why you see the pros have a lot of consistency is basically adding those three, four, five things together. So they get the, sh the hands in front, that stabilizes the face and makes it more consistent. They get their body leaned away, which allows them to get that flat spot. Now they can hit a variety of places on the turf and it's going to be good. And they deal off the club, which just basically makes it a little bit more compressed and, and better launch. Yeah. So. so I think to, uh, just to kind of get back to the, the main point of what that player was having. So if you at home are having kind of the same issue and you're say, oh, I get ahead of the ball and do this. I think you can kind of be summed up in a few pretty easy checkpoints of what you're wanting to do. So I want to go over those real quick and kind of explain why this, the ball was coming out at the That's same the height. Drill, like if they're, you mm -hmm. know, say I want to take this drill and do it this afternoon, let's mm -hmm. just break down exactly what I this would say it'd be probably less of a drill and more kind of paying attention to the, the checkpoints. The, I, obviously, the, all the drills in Stable Fluid's buying course are going to be perfect for this, but it's more about understanding how the impact works. So when the guy was getting ahead of the ball, or my player was getting ahead of the ball, he was coming into the ball the same way every time. That's not how impact works as far as ball position because you should be able to place the ball further back and have a lower launch. You should be able to place it further forward and have a higher launch. So if you hit these checkpoints, you'll be able to do that. So essentially what we want to have with our body is we want to have a spine angle at address, maintain that up to the top, and then increase on the downswing. The main thing here is having the nose behind the midline, and that's what, about three, four inches-ish on average from all yeah. the tour pros? Yeah, they'll be really behind, consistent with that. Behind the midline. You not see anybody with that nose in front like we're talking about. No, yeah, nobody gets ahead of the ball, and maybe if they're trying to hit some kind of weird shot, but nothing as far as stock shots. Can you explain and, real quick before you go on, what, what mm -hmm. is the midline for the players? So midline, if you split the feet equal distance and you draw a line straight up out of the ground, that's your midline. And you always want to do it off your stance width because it's easy to get a little bit off. So if you just think the equal distance or split the distance between your feet straight up out of the ground. Okay. So midline, vertical midline. So if you're doing that, if you keep your nose behind and get your belt buckle in front. Now, the shaft lean being at impact, a line I love to draw from my students, especially my online students, down the shaft or down the arm. If I draw a line like down this. the arm, exactly like that, and then we look at the angle of the shaft, you can see there's some space here. Uh, sometimes I call this a compression angle. Mm -hmm. um, so if we keep this space the same, if the ball is further back, that ball, that club's going to be de-lofted. 
if I move it further forward, you can see I have less shaft lean, mm -hmm. but I still have this angle between the two. So this ball is going to launch higher, but I'm still going to be able to have that stable impact and then release it out in front. And that's one of the big, so, you know, kind of transitioning into what we're going to talk about here next. Uh, and we'll jump back into that. Uh -huh. One of the questions I always get is, why even try to get this shaft lean? So why should I care? So pros are taking their lob wedge. Let's say I'm struggling with shaft lean. I wanna, I wanna get my hands almost like this when I'm making my normal swing. That's natural to me. And when I try to get my hands in front, it's a new feeling. You know, it feels a little awkward at first until I get it down. Why not just take a pitching wedge instead of a lob wedge and hit the shot there so that I can deal off the club, I can hit it lower. And the big point is, I have to have my hands leading the way to have consistency in the face. So if you had a push cart, I know I've used this analogy a lot, you've probably heard it. If I have a push cart and I'm pushing behind it, I'm constantly having to steer because the center of mass of the object is on this side of where I'm applying force and I'm having to kind of guide it to keep it straight. If I turn that around and I'm pulling that same cart, I don't have to do any steering. I can walk in any direction. Mm -hmm. Since the center of mass is trailing, it just follows right along with me. Same thing in the golf swing. With this trailing behind the hands, it makes it more consistent. Also, it makes it much easier to get that ball first contact and then hit the ground after the ball. Which I think is a little more important. Well, they're both super important. You're gonna have more control, but the solid contact's pretty much king. Can't have solid contact. It's mm -hmm. like you can't even play at all, right? Right, yeah. Uh, so going back to what we just talked about there, okay. When you did both of those examples, you had the, the shaft straight up and down on the ball up. Right, so I'll put you one back and one forward, extreme examples. Yeah, you mm -hmm. still had, so, so this in the this one, in, in relationship to your left arm, you still had lag. Mm -hmm. And if you think about your hands kind of moving this way, the club head is still trailing behind this lead arm a little bit. Right. Rather than show the wrong way a flip. The flip, yep. be, I had to get out of posture a little bit to get yep. it. So now the club is almost, passing, yeah. the club head's passing the arms. That's a different, that's the physics of that are different. So yeah, that's, on, that's the exact opposite of what we want. If you're gonna try to hit a high shot this way, extremely inconsistent, mm -hmm. lots of chunks and thins, lots of face control issues. Most players will line this up at impact no matter where the ball is, and that's yeah. what that player was doing. But if you keep it where your body's angled back and you get the good way of hitting a high shot or the, less, or, you know, the club's almost straight up and down, the physics are much better there. You go to yeah. the back ball now, and we're gonna hit a lower one, same thing, club edge trailing behind, it's just a little bit extra and we're taking mm -hmm. a little bit extra and loft off the of it. The great thing about this is if you, if you understand this angle, you can, you can understand, hey, if I put this ball in the back, or in the back of my stance, if I, ha I can have the same impact move if it's in the back or in the front, and you can literally just control your height. That's where you see tour players, oh, to hit a higher shot and move it forward, but the players at home that are watching that, they don't understand that dynamic. Yeah, I like that. It's like because, it takes the same swing, just move it a ball back or a ball forward. Yeah. That, that's usually the way I like to, to, to do it. Mm -hmm. So for normal trajectory change, you're looking at maybe just a little over a ball forwards or backwards. Yeah, it doesn't take, I was showing an extreme example there, yeah, so, but, so, see it. so it's easy to see. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. he's showing you there just for the visual first, but in reality, I would say almost about a ball. So this center ball would be standard, neutral. I don't know if the cameras line up perfectly to see that. If I play a ball back, that's going to be my low shot. I play a ball forward, that's going to be my high shot. Mm -hmm. And that's really all you have to do. Yeah. Well, one thing you were telling me, or sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, one thing you said that was really interesting, I thought, and it's just a different way than I've ever phrased it, but I think it's really good. Uh, talk about the bow and the lead wrist, because I've talked about this a lot, how you have to bow the wrist when you get shaft lean. Mm -hmm. But then how you like to look at the shaft sticking out. Okay, yeah, that's a, this is a question I get all the time from my online students is always, how much do we bow the wrist? You've probably seen this a lot. This is a move that we couple with shallowing from the top of the swing. This is kind of the king when it comes to squaring up the club face, especially when you first start getting the path and everything good. The problem is, is depending on your grip, is depends on how much you bow the wrist. So I kind of try to keep it real simple with my players so they can un obviously understand the dynamics of it, but also be able to execute hitting solid straight shots. So the answer is pretty much simple. We don't look at how much we bow the wrist. You bow the wrist how much you need to based on your grip. So what that means is no matter if I have a super, super strong grip or a super, super weak grip or anywhere in between, we can look at the extension. Let me grab a stick. Grab a alignment stick? Yeah. Be perfect. So this is a drill I do with my, my online students all the time. 
where you put a stick. And I'm sure you've seen this before, but this is kind of one of my pet peeves in the, in the golf world is you can have a good drill, and if you do that drill incorrectly or you don't understand it, it doesn't do you any good. But the same drill, when you understand it, something like this, it becomes so much easier on you. So no matter, uh, no matter what grip you have as you're coming into impact, you want that extension of the club outside your arm. So you can see right here, I have a very weak grip. If I have a very strong grip, you can see now my logo of my club is pointing at the camera. The stick is still outside the arm. And, it, and, and depending, so if you have a stronger grip, just so you know, you're gonna bow a little less. If you have like a Colin Morikawa, much more weak grip, you're gonna have to bow a lot. And then you can kind of tweak that, but if you pay attention to the extension of the club and you have that outside your arm coming through impact, you can bow your wrist a little more, a little less, and that'll help square the club up. So to kind of recap, go back into that position again. When you get the proper amount of shaft lean with any club, this stick is going to be outside of this left arm. It's going to be leaning in front of it. Now, if I have, let's go ahead and face the camera here and show them in regards to the leading edge, what a weak grip would be okay. or more. Uh, this would be kind of similar. This has got to be real popular. Uh, Hogan's Five Fundamentals, he had a very weak grip in there. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods has a fairly weak grip. But basically the leading edge of the club is going to match the back logo of the glove. So if I took a, an arrow and shot it out of the logo of the glove, it's facing toward the target. And the leading edge here, or the, the, the leading edge of the club or the bottom groove is also facing to the target. We're not talking about the loft in the club, but just the leading edge of it. So this so would be- you kind of think, no matter like if there was a laser beam coming straight out of the backhand and out of the club, if you had a perfectly weak grip, they'd both be pointing in the same exact direction. Yeah, and, and when you do that, like a, a Colin Morikawa has a very weak grip, even more than that. He may even be turned a little bit more to the left. So go ahead and turn your hand a little more. A little under more. Yeah, a little mm -hmm. more under or turned this way. From your perspective, if you're holding the club, it'd be counterclockwise. Now the issue there is if I'm making my downswing, go ahead and get some lag and start to square up the face, that wrist is gonna have to be really bowed. Well, so, if you look at his swing too, he's, his wrist is super, super bowed. At most impact. bowed on tour, mm -hmm. right? So really bowed left wrist to get that face to be square. Now, if he, if he leaned the shaft back. But again, this extension of the club, still yep. outside the arm. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Now, if you, if you lean the club back, some people would maybe square that face up by trying to flip or scoop. Right. And yeah, now they square the face up uh, but they didn't get the shaft lean. So basically right. the more shaft lean you want and the weaker the grip you have, you got to do a lot of bowing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes very difficult on the wrist. You want to show them the other side too, super, super strong yeah, let's grip. Let's go super strong now. So let's say we go- Dustin uh, Johnson type uh, of. Will's Al Torres or- uh, J.B. Holmes uh, was pretty strong too. I'm trying to think who has the strongest on tour. Is Al Torres isn't that strong. I'm thinking of another, uh, I can't remember who, uh, who the guy is I'm thinking about. Like a Paul Easinger, let's say. Okay. So go up here in front of the, the camera again. Up, oh, yeah. So leading edge would be square, the same as last time on the club face, but now the logo of the glove is almost facing like up in this direction. So again, so, going back to the laser beam coming straight out of the back of the hand, strong, it's pointing uh, yeah. so perpendicular, weak, and then weaker would be, weaker would like be parallel. Or if you're from your perspective, if you're holding a club, just turn your hand to the clockwise. Yeah. The lead hand, we're talking well, about that one because it's more. The right hand has a little more variation in there, but the mm -hmm. lead hand definitely uh, will, will control the club face a little bit more when it comes to grip. And when players understand the, the lead hand, it's, it's a lot, it makes a lot more sense to them. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. So let's do mm -hmm. the, go back down to impact now, show me the good impact position with a strong grip. So now this wrist is perfectly flat. There's no mm -hmm. bow in there at all. The shaft angle is still coming in front of the arm. The club face is square. Everything is mm -hmm. the same. It's, yeah. just, it's just the, the, the wrist is flat versus bowed because mm -hmm. of the hand angle. Right, so that's the two extremes. You have one, there's no bow, but you still have the same angles at impact. And then you have one where you have pretty much maximum bow, yeah. and you still have the same angles at impact. Yeah. And then the, the, the cool thing about understanding, I always like teaching in extremes anyways. If you understand the two extremes, you can say, well, the more my hand is pointing towards the target, the more I have to bow, the less, the less I have to bow. Kind yeah. of an easy way to think about it. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the, the right one for you is play around with different grips. So let's go really weak uh, or more to the left, and then let's gradually get it stronger and stronger and see which one helps you hit the straightest would be what I would recommend as being like the easiest way to get into it. We can show them real quick if you want. We can do yeah. like a, this is a, a drill I do with all my online students at a certain point. Uh, that kind of comes back to what we first started about, just kind of backtrack a little bit. 
if they have good spine angle mechanics, then we work on this. Mm -hmm. Just like we talked about before, it doesn't really work if your body movement's off. So, um, but anyway, so I'll, I'll hit a couple little short ones sure. here. So yeah, this boy. is the, the normal progression I'll see is when they start. So we'll keep the stick more outside the arm, just hit these little shots through impact and you'll see the shot kind of shoot way off to the right. I don't know if the, that's gonna pick it off. I'll wake up the radar. We've been talking so much, our radar is asleep. See if we can get that back on. Should be good. So I'm gonna hit this right on purpose, but normally when a player is used to flipping the club at impact to square it up, when they get the hands in front, that club face kind of opens up. So when they first start keeping the stick outside, the ball still shoot a little bit out to the right. I might not be hitting it hard it may enough. Might not be hard enough, yeah, for the radar pickup. But basically, so, he's just saying if this is the straight line in the radar screen. So mm -hmm. if you're looking from this angle, if he hit that dead straight, it hit the center line, mm -hmm. the ball is flying off to the right and hitting over right. here somewhere. So big block. So this is a good little drill you can do to start feeling being square through impact because now, okay, that's shooting off a little bit to the right. I'm going to bow just a little bit more, and then, and then I can see that ball starting off a little bit more to the left, so I bowed too much. I closed the face going through impact. So that would be kind of the extremes, one super open, one super uh, closed, and then at some point in there, you can say, okay, I bowed that one too much, and then maybe get one a little bit. Oh, that one I left kind of wide open. But uh, the, you the deal is- Kind of go back is, and forth until you find- Yeah. So, so there's two ways to go about it there. You can either, you can either bow one. or flatten the wrist to control the direction. Right. Or you can change your grip. So, so you test out both of them. So now that you've got the stick off there, mm -hmm. it's easier to feel. Right. So that time he tried to bow the wrist a little bit more to straighten it out mm -hmm. and it straightened it out. If that feels really good to you and you think, oh, I can play great consistent golf doing that, then keep your normal grip or more of a neutral or a weaker grip and just get a little more bowing. That's what Dustin Johnson and a lot of those guys do. Yeah. Um, if you don't like the bowing as much and it feels awkward, then you can accomplish the same thing by just right. strengthening the grip, right? Well, so that's what I love, what love about both of this because now the players at home, they can tweak it as much as they want. They, yeah. they can say, okay, I like my grip, but I can't close the face, so maybe I need to strengthen my grip a little bit, and it's a little easier to close the face. Or they say, maybe I'd like to feel a little bit more bow, so maybe I'll weaken my grip or anywhere in between. Or let me keep my grip exactly the same and then feel how much I need to bow to square it up. Yeah. It pretty much gives you, I don't know, all, all kinds of control over how you want to hold the club because, I mean, we've seen with all the tour pros that – there's super strong grips, there's super weak grips, and they all, yeah. the, the consistent factor is how they're going through impact. Yeah, so if you're more like Hogan, mm -hmm. wanting to bow it, um, you know, more Kyle wanting to bow it, maybe that feels better to you. Or if you're more of the stronger grip, like a Sergio Garcia, you don't have to bow it as much. Uh, that kind of leads us into what I think is the next uh, really good drill to go for the next thing, which is what I call the power position. So. All of this is just to get the club coming through impact in the proper way. So if you take every single great ball striker, whether it's the best player at your club to PJ Tour, they're delivering the club through impact through this zone the proper way. And that's what I call the power position. I got a great bonus video for you here in a, just a second. You just go ahead and click on that video. You'll be able to watch it next. I'll go over the power position with you and it'll pair up perfectly with what we just talked about. So thanks, Michael, and we'll see you in the power position.